Hello my friends, Mike here and in this video I'm going to show you two sample libraries from Stefano Maccarelli, the maker of the Ethera series and these two are excellent for Nordic, Viking and tribal music. The first one is called Prometheus which is a deep male Viking style vocals and the other one is called Elements uh, cinematic rhythms and it has a lot of various um, you know tribal war drums viking drums as you can see here but first before we dive in i want to show you the track i wrote and i made a challenge uh, for myself to only use these two libraries for the entire track plus some of my own uh, vocals uh, for effect but only those two sample libraries so this is the track i wrote starting now Okay, so that was my Viking music uh, track uh, called, I think I called it Path of the Warrior. Now let's dive into these two sample libraries that I used and I will show you how I used them in this uh, composition. Okay, so let's dive in starting with Prometheus, which is the male vocal library. You get one, let's see, 38 different uh, patches. The uh, best ones, in my opinion, are always these legato, it's true legato. Um, Stefano is amazing at creating these legato vocal libraries uh, in the Ethera series. So that is the M, let's try, I, I prefer A's and O's. I think I need to turn on low, uh, the low latency mode, mode here. Uh, and you can switch in between different 
you know, or uh, on, on this uh, warrior true legato, and you get different styles. You get a true dark true legato. Let's try that one. You see a different singer. You can check the info here, and you can see the latency you need to put uh, to before the grid to make sure it's synced up. Let's try a dark oh low here. Oh, this. This is probably my favorite in this library. You can play like this. Little misty mountains there for you. And I think for each vocal, true legato, he has like these three versions of us. I mean, that's deep. That's like bass deep. Let's see. It goes down to B flat. Two. Um, and then you have, let's see, three different true legato. So you get a folk. A true legato. I don't think I use this one, but let's see. Let's try. I haven't actually tried to reduce legato speed. You can, of course, automate this if you want to. Let's see. Zero, four. Control sample playback start position using this knob, okay? I'm actually not sure what that means, but um, you can change the attack, release, volume, room, sound. You can even turn off the legato if you want to. Uh, turn off the room, let's see if you, how. Okay, so it's pretty close. Still some great body there, and then add, let's say, a third party reverb. Let's see if we can do this in low latency mode. I'm not sure. Uh, let's try uh, put some seventh heaven reverb on top of this. Let's see. Does this work? Yes, it does. Okay, so then we can have that in the background going on here. So. Uh, I need to say that for the most part it works amazing on slower melodies. I haven't actually tried to do anything, you know, faster. Okay, so it, it kind of works that way too. But I mean, for lyrical expressive phrases it's amazing. So you got those true legato as all the theory series, but also get textures and phrases, sustains, you know, all kinds of different things, even some other stuff here, which I will show you in the track later, but, you know, some cool dark textures and high textures here, for example. I used some of these, I think. And here you can change between different syllables, so... These are great for those low vocal drones. I mean, put this in the background, then, you know, do a melody on top, like, let's say, C. Oh no, you can do another vocal from this library or another instrument. I like using that for deep, you know, low drone stuff. And you also get some phrases, which, uh, as I said in my earlier review on the other theater library, I don't usually use phrases like ever, but this actually works, especially if you are in the same key. So C minor here, for example, this one. And just choose any key here. Still, you have the dynamic slider. And you can change in the middle of the phrase. You can also put on sync button and sync to the host tempo, but then the sequence will need to be running, of course. Right, so you can put them uh, one and after another and create the the actual performance, which is what I did in this track. So you have various kinds of phrases. You have also a really cool warrior chant builder here because this you can use the builder here, and you know create uh, um, different styles. You have these to choose from here, but you can also clear it. You can also randomize 
like this, which I really love because it's tedious to do this every time. And now you get this kind of style. Right? And you can change, which I really like, uh, with the either with back and forth here, key switches, or with the sustain pedal. If I just press the sustain pedal, you can see here. Uh, let's see. Here, you can use the sustain pedal. So let's see if you can see it in. Yeah, so I. Whoops, I accidentally triggered a lot of sustains. Um, but you can change it up there and you know until you um, are satisfied. And you can also go back with this key switch to the beginning. So it's a pretty. Or, you know, you know, you know how phrase builders work, right? Uh, it's pretty standard in vocal libraries. Then you have uh, various sustains. These are, I guess, no tr not true legato, but they can still work really great. So when I pr play legato, it actually sounds pretty good too. And I, since these are sustains, I can do harmonies. Man, that sounded good. And what what struck me about these libraries by Stefano is that they are so expressive and sound so good from the get-go. I, I just hold down Harmon like that and I am immediately inspired. <coughs> Sorry. And come up with melodies in my head to put on top of that. And it's just like, even if you don't end up using the, the sound, it just triggers your creativity, at least for me. Um, then you get some kind of short crescendos. I didn't use those. You have some cool uh, shouts, like. Let's see if these are. Uh, you can also check here the vocals, who did the vocals and so on. But or this not you cannot change the root key on this form and offset i guess no but they are not really tonal so i guess that's the reason you get some uh, cool growls and you see the bpm uh, it, you can't sync bpm on, i think on all the patches but it's good to know because you don't want to go too high or low uh, from the original <laughs> These are so perfect for my Viking music that I do a lot of recently. But, so you get all of these cool vocals. I mean, I don't, I will not go through each one because uh, Stefano and other guys have done that a lot. I just want to show you the highlights because I also want to show you how I used uh, all these things in my composition. But you have a drone generator here, for example. So you get into more hybrid stuff. Let's see, vocal drone, C minor. Let's try something. various phrases here, drones. And you even get some other instruments. I actually use this one, the folk cello, like cool phrases that... It doesn't sound like an orchestral cello. It's, it's a very cool performance, if I just hold down a C. Right? Sustain. And, and you can choose different kinds here. So let's say hold down a C minor harmony only. So hybrid affected, it sounds more gritty and I, sh I will show I used actual this um, preset in, in the track you get fold guitar some some percussion here plaques you know different kinds uh, but also let's go to the so that's Prometheus which goes super well together with the at gold Ethera Atlantis the female version of this so these are male vocals um, but let's try also this one because this is elements cinematic rhythms and here you get zero, zero all the way up to oh man 77 different presets and you can sort them like single instruments multi instruments sequencer i actually use some of this sequencer but just starting viking let's do that and you see it's a multi-patch and i if you hold something down down here all these are different phrases Yeah. different phrases that you can trigger and create uh, unique performances by going back and forth uh, this one are rolls here you get more phrases so the red are phrases 
And here you can actually get the round robin so you can play. And it took me a while to figure out that it's laid out kind of unusual because you get the lower dynamic heats and then it goes higher so you can play. And if I play this one up here it's really loud and like an accent. Right? Um, so that's a uh, viking, you can do warrior drums, and this has a multi-patches, so again, same thing. Lots of frame drums, which I love, big huge frame drums, which are like the tribal pagan warrior vibe. Right? Uh, so you get all of those, but if you go into single instruments here, percussion, you get all the way up to 61, and you can do, let's see, warrior drums here as a single preset, and now you get... Uh, you know, the expert mode, you can get the info here for what I already showed you, loops, round robins, rolls and doubles, blah blah blah. But um, you can also get this, almost like the Punish knob from Heaviosity, I think. <laughs> but I actually ended up using a lot of these, you know, tribal percussion phrases. So, again, it's so much uh, in here, so it would take forever to go through everything, but it's mainly focused on this, you know, um, tribal kind of drums, which is not that common. It's either, you know, uh, orchestral, hybrid, cinematic style drums, or it's more, you know, rock drums, EDM drums. This uh, tribal drums, uh, I didn't have a particular library focus on that, so it ended up working very well for this type of music for me. Village drums. I mean, it's like a hearing in a Viking tavern or something. Uh, and you get also individual drums like the Gran Casa here, for example, which is a, a bass drum. But I'm not sure where this was recorded. Please, recorded at uh, Abbey Rocky Studios in Rome. Okay. Right, and you have, uh, let's see, here we can go in and choose close mic, room mic, you know, uh, ADSR, saturator, all these expert settings, which is kind of tedious, so I, I rarely go in there, but you can. Right, then uh, you can see uh, the various patches here. Again, I will not go through all the patches, because that's not how I do my uh, overviews or reviews of any sample library, but you can see there's a lot, even... Some cool metal sheets. Let's see. You know, add some higher shimmering rhythms. You have shakers. I think I used some. You have bass, cajon, uh, lots of cool stuff. Even snares. B medieval big tambourine, which is basically a tambourine in the medieval times was like a drum, but with, but with jingles. So it's not only a modern tambourine. Okay, so. With that being said, you have sh been uh, shown some of these features. Now, let's see how that works in context in the production. So let me go back here and show you. The first thing I do was this Viking accent. Uh, no, let's start with the first track you hear, which is this element's massive toms. So you see one long line here, then repeated for that, for that bar here. Zoom in. So that's a phrase that I repeat, and then I change phrase here, and then here again, like this. Right? Getting that tribal vibe, which I laid with this big tambourine, which I just showed you. I should show you one, one downside of phrases like this, with a long, uh, um, you know, that are uh, loop like this, is that if you start here, it will not sync up. Uh, and this, uh, you cannot get away from this. You need to start at the, you know, the, the, the bar line here. To get it synced up, or here. What? Didn't that work either? Okay, so so perhaps you need to start actually at the individual. I, I'm not sure. I, 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 as I said, I don't usually work this way. So that could be a downside. Uh, uh, one way to get around this is to bounce down after you, have, um, after you are happy with the performance, which I did actually hear. I bounce this to audio, so you can, you know, start uh, playback and it will... Uh, wherever you start the playback, it will sound okay. But that's just uh, something to be aware of with, with phrases. 
So those two, and then for the vocals in the back, I'm using um, this uh, dark textures, this m o, which is becomes almost like a bass. And by the way, you hear a different. Uh, I'm using lower volumes. I'm using a lot of different volumes and and panning. So just just to be aware of that when I show these sounds in context. So that is that. Play this. Little melodies thing here. As you can see, long way before the beat there. Either you can work that way, or as I did here, work with negative um, track delays. So I do that on some channels, like minus 300 millisecond or whatnot. So that I bounce, this one I bounce down. But if if I open it up, uh, is this one this phrase builder here, uh, and especially with phrase builders, if you want to make sure they they start and go through the correct phrases that you set up, I highly recommend you to bounce it down uh, after working with this. So this is the warrior phrases, right? That creates also that Viking vibe in the beginning. Then I want to show you, I actually did, I want to try some of my own vocals just to, because when you mix real vocals, your own performances, or acoustic instruments or anything, it really takes your track to the next level, creating your unique sound. So I added some cool whispers, just random whispers, added a tremolo, room widener here, some small reverb, pushed it way to the back, this to add some creepy background, you know, with a bit of darkness. <laughs> Sounds like nonsense because it is, but in context, I mean, it adds so much. It adds that dark, uh, gritty aspect of it. So then, let's say we are at the percussion. Then uh, I wanted to build some energy into the chorus here, so I'm using symbols from elements here. This elements 4 to 6 symbols. And uh, just made this little thing here. Let's see. I think I ended up. Ah, yeah. I I just did the hit here. I think in the end, here. But here in the middle of the chorus, I'm using a little bit of a very low in volume. These symbols, uh, as you can hear. And there I did a, the roll because you get some rolls too. I'm also using a brush symbol here. You did this little tiki tiki. And building in uh, dynamics, as you can see here. And then I uh, wanted to, instead of using a riser, you know, these synth things, I wanted to keep these acoustic. So I did acoustic, an acoustic riser with my voice, basically growly style, like this, listen. So that's me doing building in uh, the growl in uh, intensity and in uh, growliness, if that's, that is the word, uh, more throat, basically. So that takes us into the chorus, and here, of course, I want to add energy. So I added, uh, well, let's see, the frame drums actually came in all the way here in the second section of the first verse. And you can hear these are panned left and back, right? Right, and then we go into here. Very sparse, because I want to uh, add lots of air in between, and then these warrior drums also. And that, those I pan to the right, but to the front right. So one is back, uh, left, and, and by the way, when I talk about back, I'm talking about using the binaural panner in Logic. I, I, I don't know if your DAW has this, but you can actually pan back, uh, which I love using. So then I used this warrior element, village drum. And, and those two together, since one is left and one is right. You know, add some spatial aspect to it all. And that takes us to the entire percussion section. You no, know, we have one left. I wanted to... Because um, these types of tribal music really emphasizes the one. So, one... But you don't, you know... Uh, you want to have a steady beat, so I wanted to have an extra accent on, on the ones, which I uh, use this, I call it Viking accents, these warrior drums. Uh, and this time I'm using one of the 
know, single one shots. And not very loud either, but it, it actually adds up. So listen to it. Yeah, you hear that one because you get the punch in the one. So that is the percussion section. For the for the driving section here, I'm using actually only my own vocals. I I want I. I usually just re uh, write down some nonsense, you know, you know, exactly like word builders and you know, chant builders, some nonsense Latin or whatever uh, language you want to call it. It's not a language, because I always do it left and right. So of course I need to to overdub it in sync. So I write it down in in a notepad and then record it left and right, and that sounds like this. <laughs> So that's just uh, my own vocals doing that dark growly type vocal, adding some room widener, tube delay, compression, just a small reverb to put it, you know, not as wi uh, not as far back, but still lower in volume. So that is uh, my vocal rhythm. Let's go to the backing texture. So here I'm using. Uh, did I show this already? <laughs> yeah. So this is the this one which becomes almost a low bass or something and then with the warrior chant then i'm using my own whispers let's see did i do anything else no that's the backing textures for the bass i actually didn't use any bass for this track because well most of the viking music back in the days does did not have any real bass instrument it's just lower range so i'm using this folk cello that i talked about earlier and using this phrase just changing from the root note of the chord to the next here because it sounds bassy very dark and gritty that on uh, with the bass voice on top this one deep sustains same note so layered i mean this is so mean this is so epic in a dark atmospheric way that is and then for uh, the other instruments i'm using more of these warrior phrases for here for the i wanted to have you know this mm, excitement energy in the chorus so i'm using one of the warrior vocal phrases here quite high in range but still has a lot of body in the voice and then to get some energy and drive, I also added this folk guitar. A little tremolo. I added a panning, auto panner. Right? Which I think sounds really cool. Uh, let's see. Did I use anything else? No, no, I, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it for this track. This entire composition <laughs> was produced only using... Uh, Prometheus, Ethera Gold Prometheus, the male, uh, so you can see folk cello here, but you know, it's mainly the deep warrior style vocals uh, in this library from true legatus to phrases to textures and so on. And all the percussion was from elements, cinematic rhythms uh, by the same, ma same maker and only added some of my own vocals to sprinkle in to add some more unique expressiveness into it. So I will leave links to both these libraries in the description. Uh, I highly recommend you check them out, as well as the previous library I already reviewed, which is Ethereum Gold Atlantis, which is the female version of this. Uh, and then I'll see you in the next video, my friends.